big hello from sunny Noosa, where I've exploded one of our travel bubbles to spend a week, a change of scene. It's fresh in my mind. It's made me feel great. I'm staying with some friends up here in the beautiful Noosa hinterland, and it's my opportunity to film our very first segment of Fork in the Road. Hi, I'm Guy Morgan, and this is the inaugural segment of uh, of Fork in the Road. Uh, I'm an architect by profession. I've also uh, authored a book called Bu Building Your Bali Dream Villa and I own and run a small resort in Bali, so as a hotelier. Um, one other thing I really enjoy doing is working with young people uh, as a volunteer at a drop-in centre. Um, okay, Guy, why are you so interested in travel and how did this interest begin? I've been very fortunate in my career and in my life to be able to uh, not only travel but live overseas. And in that time, it gave me access to travel and explore more than 60 countries. Um, I've also been a very curious person and by nature, even as a child, my parents tell, tell me that when we would do road trips, I would be the, the kid who would never sleep in the back of the car and always want to see what was around the next corner. So it's, it's almost like it's been inherent in me to be curious about what's ahead, what's around the corner, other cultures, um, and uh, I guess other ways of living and thinking and being. I was very for fortunate in that when I was a child, my parents uh, were great travellers. My father in particular was very interested in travelling. And some of my earliest memories are of our family going on family holidays, road trips. Um, when I was about 11, we went on a cruise uh, to Fiji. And even then, my father made sure that we drove around in Fiji and explored the back roads. Uh, growing up in Adelaide, you're never too far from the outback. And I remember going to see uh, what was the Nairs Rock with my great-grandmother when I was 10. Uh, so... It was always there, and even though I then went on to school, school and university, I remember being at university, and my main aim was not to get a career at the end of that, but to go travelling. Where have I been? I've been to probably more than 60 countries at last count. I've been fortunate enough to live in several of them, including uh, Indonesia, uh, including Thailand, England, Canada... I spent a year uh, in a combi van travelling around the, the US. We went to 42 different states. I've backpacked through most of Southeast Asia, a large chunk of Europe, uh, a little bit of Africa, and uh, all of the countries of Central America. So most of you probably know that travel occurs in many styles and many levels, and I've been probably lucky enough to try most of them in my life. Of course, when I was younger as a student and we were travelling on a budget, backpacking was the way to go. And backpacking back then didn't involve having uh, phones or computers. Uh, we had old dog-eared copies of Lonely Planet that we used uh, to get from place to place, most of the time with information that was outdated and certainly... Uh, costs that were outdated, but nevertheless, word of mouth was the main form of communication, meeting other travellers and talking to them about the road ahead, sometimes joining up with them to travel together, uh, and some of those travels are probably some of my most memorable, some of the friends that I met in those days, and we're talking the mid-80s through to mid-late 90s, uh, are still my friends to this day, and I treasure those memories a lot. So I've also done a bit of what I could, what you could probably call uh, adventure travel, and adventure travel uh, means going to a country and undertaking some sort of adventurous activity like bungee jumping, uh, rafting. Uh, New Zealand, of course, is very famous for adventure travel, and I love New Zealand. Uh, rafting, 
I've done in New Zealand, Australia. Rafting in particular is something I particularly enjoyed and uh, in New Zealand, Australia, Indonesia, Thailand, a couple of other places. The, Thai, the rafting I did in Thailand was along uh, the Irrawaddy on the border with Burma and was actually on bamboo rafts. So that was uh, something that I'll always remember. Uh, I also uh, am a great lover of snow skiing and uh, I've skied in Europe, in Japan, in New Zealand, in Australia and even these days one of my favourite trips is going uh, with my friends and meeting somewhere amazing and skiing for a week or so. Uh, and as for five-star travel, well, I cannot lie, I've had my share. Uh, one of my specialties as an architect is a resort designer and that enabled me to travel to some pretty amazing resorts and stay in them during my career. Uh, it's always lovely to stay in a five-star resort when someone else is paying. Uh, and there are some amazing resorts in the world. Increasingly, I'm interested in environmental, de uh, environmental design and sustainability in resort design, and it allows us to explore different types of sustainable technologies quite often before they are widely available to the general public. And so that's a, that's a great thrill to be involved in that. One of the most wonderful things about travel is the positive impact that it has on people's lives. And during my travels, I've seen many people change their ideas, change their worldview, get rid of old thinking patterns and establish new ones, get rid of prejudices uh, and create a worldview that makes us realise that people, although there is only one race, and that's the human race, people's lives unfold very, diff unfold very differently in different parts of the world. And what's true for one may not be true for everyone else. And this is a fundamental change in the way I've seen the world through my fortunate experiences of being able to travel and live overseas. Travel impacts people's lives in a positive way, particularly their mental well-being. When people travel, they often experience aha moments, they experience epiphanies, and things happen that cause them to question ideas that they may have held close to them, close for a very long time, and make them realise that perhaps there's another view, perhaps there's another uh, side to that argument that they haven't seen before. And this, I believe, changes people's worldview. It certainly changed mine, and I hope in this segment to be able to inspire people to go travelling and have their worldview changed as well. For example, when I was younger, a teenager in fact, I was chosen to go on a youth exchange program uh, with some other Australian kids, and we were deposited in several villages in central Java. We learned in a very short time, first of all, how to speak uh, Bahasa Indonesia. We learned about uh, local cu customs, but to say that we were cult in a state of cultural shock is a bit of an understatement. The food was very much what the local people ate. The customs were very much what the local people followed and their religion was a combination of local animism, although they were Muslims. I've never experienced such kind, hospitable people before or since, and there was a lesson for me in there in that it changed my prejudice about some labels that you hear regarding other people. Uh, and these are values that I still hold to this day, and I remember those days with fondness, and again, I'm still friends with a lot of the people that I was involved in that exchange with. So the people you pick up along the way is also one of the most amazing uh, aspects of a life filled with travel. So what can you expect from my segment and how does it relate to uh, men's mental health? I believe that all aspects of travel and experiencing other cultures and changing your environment 
can have a positive effect on your mental health. Planning a trip, going on a trip, remembering a trip, what you do while you're away, living overseas, all of these things have, I feel, created me and my world image, my world view. And I hope that by being inspired by other people's stories of what's happened to them while they're on their travels, that you'll be inspired as well. So I'm going to be interviewing all kinds of people from all walks of life all over the world. And they're going to be talking to me about experiences they've had while traveling or experiencing other cultures, particularly in relation to a moment or an hour or a day or a trip or a meal that has in some way fundamentally changed them, changed their way of thinking, changed their way of looking at the world. Let's go away. Time for some travel tips, destinations, and some thoughts about what we could do during this time of COVID-19 to explore our own individual states or the other states that we might have travel bubbles with. Are you in Western Australia? I would suggest going to the beautiful seaside town of Kalbarri. Kalbarri, north of Perth, is one of my most wonderful memories of Western Australia. And my Western Australian friends tell me it's still beautiful. My memories of Kalbarri uh, involve riding horses along the beach with a beautiful sunset over the Indian Ocean, canoeing in the uh, Kalbarri National Park. I understand there's now a beautiful floating uh, walk that you can do there as well. The people are lovely. It's a gorgeous destination in its own right. And that's my tip for Western Australia. If you live in my home state of South Australia, in South Australia, my tip for traveling during COVID-19 period is to go on a houseboat. And I know what you're gonna say, we've all been on houseboats before and you probably have, but have you done it just with your loved one or with a mate or with your dog? And this is what I did with my partner and my dog. We hired a fantastic little two berth houseboat from the River Glen Marina at Murray Bridge. It was like a little studio apartment floating on the river. It was easy to maneuver. It was cheap to run. And as I recall, it was around about $75 a day. We had a fantastic holiday. It was cozy at night. And actually this time of year, just before high season, it's a perfect time to go on the river. For Victoria, and I know Victoria has suffered a little bit more than others during COVID-19, I've got two tips. One is the beautiful area of Wilson's Promontory National Park. Absolutely stunning coastal scenery, the southernmost point of Australia, beautiful walks, great beaches, just go. The other one that I'd recommend for Victoria is uh, the Grampians area and Grampians National Park. This is uh, an area that's equally as popular with South Australians as Victorians in, in Western Victoria has uh, an inordinate amount of sunshine, uh, wonderful bushwalks, breathtaking landscapes, and I'm always a little bit surprised how many uh, people haven't yet been there. If you're in Tasmania or thinking of heading down that way, I'd really suggest considering King Island. King Island is a beautiful landscape, a beautiful island in the Bass Strait. Flights are available from both Victoria and Tasmania not only famous for its incredible dairy produce, but also its landscape, the friendliness of its people, and again, some beautiful, beautiful walks. And if you're in New South Wales, I must recommend the stunning Warrumbungal Ranges and the nearby town of Coonabarabran. The jagged peaks are arranged in a circle uh, with the incredible crater bluff, uh, one of the features of that walk. Uh, also the nearby Siding Springs Observatory, which is well worth a visit, uh, and a lot of other wonderful things to see in that area. And for Queenslanders up there, hi everyone. I'd like to really recommend uh, Carnarvon Gorge. It's a bit of a drive from Brisbane, but the bushwalks through that area, the Aboriginal uh, paintings, uh, the, the getting back to nature, it'll clear your head post COVID-19 and you'll have a wonderful time. It's well worth the effort.
And for Northern Territorians, I'm not going to try and give you any advice because you guys already know the best places to go within your beautiful part of Australia. I lived in Darwin for a few years. We spent every weekend heading out bush and there are some stunning places to go. All I'm going to do is encourage you to go away. Big hello from sunny Noosa, where I've exploited one of our travel bubbles to spend a week, a change of scene. It's fresh in my mind. It's made me feel great. I'm staying with some friends up here in the beautiful Noosa hinterland. And it's my opportunity to film our very first segment of Fork in the Road. Mm -hmm.